What's going on guys? Today we've got a video that has been highly requested. We're going to give you a tour around our backpacks of what we use when we go hiking. As you might know by now, we are doing the West Highland Way in Scotland, which we're really excited about. And by the time this video goes out, we should be nearly at the end, hopefully not too battered and bruised. So I'm going to show you around my backpack first and it's a low alpine Manaslu, I think you, I think you call it. It's a 55 to 65 litre. And this is what I used on the Kungsleden trail and it was amazing. This backpack actually was given to us and we were the first people to use this backpack. And to be honest, I didn't have a bad thing to say about it. It was really good, really comfortable. So on the outside, we have got a camping mug, always very useful. Then I've got my black diamond hiking poles, also really nice, never had a problem with them on the Kungsleden. In the front pouch, I have some camera gear. So I've got the Jobby uh, Gorilla Pod, very useful for kind of hugging the camera around trees and whatnot. It means I don't have to carry a full size tripod, which is useful when you're hiking long distance to keep the weight down. So yeah, that's a must for any photographers. Also in the front of the bag is flip-flops. So I didn't actually take any flip-flops uh, on the Kungsleden and many other people did and I regretted it every night when I got to the camp and I couldn't take my boots off basically because if you want to walk to the toilet it's a long way away so you have to put your boots on every time and you don't get a chance to rest your feet so I'd definitely say take flip-flops if you're doing a long distance hike. If we go into the top of the bag, just open this up a little bit, we have in the top my camera bag. So I've actually managed to slim it down for this hike, which is useful because I don't need to take things like uh, chargers because we're hoping to do the hike in about five days. So I don't need to charge. There's nowhere to charge. So, you know, that's not a problem. So if I open this up, see what's inside. We have the camera we are going to be filming the hike on is the Canon XF100. Brilliant camera, perfect for documentary use. And I've got a small Audio Technica shotgun mic on there. And this performed amazingly. It's like a really good combo. This is what we shot the Kungsleden on and basically I'm not really changing anything because it works so well. Put that down there. And then we have my batteries and my cards. So I've got SD cards and CF cards and a load of batteries. Each uh, set of batteries and cards I put in their own kind of waterproof plastic cover just to keep them dry, even though they're in a waterproof cover you know, you don't want to lose your media, the stuff that you've shot, and you don't want to kind of ruin your batteries. So this just keeps them nice and dry. These batteries have got one, two, three, four, five. So five batteries for my stills camera, which is the Fuji X100. Really good camera. It's the smallest camera that I've found with really nice image quality. I just love, love the image off that camera and it's compact. So one battery a day for that. So I've got to kind of ration myself because it does eat through batteries, but that should be more than enough. Card wise, I think I've got five 64 gig CF cards and two 64 gig SD cards as well. In here, we've got all of our batteries. So I've got in total four batteries and these weigh quite a lot. You know, when you're hiking, you want to keep the weight down. These do weigh quite a lot, but you know, I need the power for a whole week. So four batteries should keep me going without having to ration too much. Okay, so next up, we have my waterproof trousers and they're in their own bag. And then we've got a dry bag with my camera that I mentioned a minute ago, the Fuji X100, and I've got that in a 
nice little leather case if I can get it out of the bag so yeah Fuji X100 brilliant camera I took all of the photos from the Kungsladen on this and they were printed by Low Alpine they were used by Low Alpine in uh, promotional uh, stuff as well so a very good camera and the image quality is perfect so that's that and then also in there I've got the Garmin uh, eTrek 10 which is a GPS unit we've loaded on the uh, West Highland Way map on there and day to day I can keep track of how far we're actually hiking how quickly we're going and generally where we are on the map so it's got some really cool features and that's going to come in really useful it's one thing I really wish that we had on the Kungsladen was a GPS So next up, we have my Thermarest Neo Air camping mat. This thing is unbelievable. It, I believe it's the best camping mat you can, you can have. You know, it blows up really quickly. It's so comfortable, you just wouldn't imagine you're camping. So yeah, I really recommend the Thermarest Neo Air. And then under that, I got my food bag. So let's just, have a little look and see what's in the food bag and I'll pick out a few different things that we've got. So typ typical things to have for lunch, we have something like a mug shot. They're really good, super lightweight, super compact. And for dinner, we have instant noodles. These are also really lightweight, not so compact, but a fair amount of calories uh, so these keep you full as well which is really nice a typical thing to have on the evening might be hot chocolate just to keep you warm really useful we have some of these kind of like yogurt cereal bar things for breakfast really nice we have also have like things like cup of soups also really useful just in case you're feeling a bit peckish but don't want a full meal. And then we just have like a shed load of chocolate. So we probably have about two, three chocolate bars a day just to keep us going, good energy and really useful to have and taste nice. That's what I love about hiking long distances. You can eat as much chocolate as you want. So that's food. Okay, so we're on to clothes. So I will be wearing some of these clothes. So these are my Rab trousers. These things are amazing, elasticated, really comfortable. And it's the only pair of trousers I took on the trail and the Kungsladen. So I'm only taking one pair of trousers again. That should do me. It's only five days. I have my Rab waterproof jacket. This performed really well in torrential rain. It did start to get some water come through, but what can you do? You know, when it's been raining for three days, you can't expect it to, to keep you perfectly dry. And then generally, I'll be wearing that generally. And then I have in here, just a uh, waterproof sack with all of my clothes in. So I've actually got some waterproof socks here, which is a first. I've never used these, but on the Kungsladen I did get wet feet, but I've got brand new boots for this hike, so I should be fine. But these socks look very interesting. I'm not sure how comfortable they're gonna be, but I'm gonna give them a whirl if I need to. I have a mountain hardware fleece, really good for the evening when you're sitting around a fire or you're just chilling out. I have a base layer top, long sleeve, also really good for the night, sleeping in. And then these are the uh, tops that I have, a wrap top base layer that I'll be hiking in most of the time, long sleeve. The reason I like the long sleeve is because usually I just wear that base layer underneath my waterproof top, so it stops the uh, material from sticking to your arm. So yeah, there's another one of them. Heli Hansen, boxers, pair of boxers for each day, as you do. 
really small fold up camping towel this thing's amazing super lightweight but folds out really big i mean look at that and even when we've been in the van we use these they're perfect so the last few things i've got are gloves very important for when it's very windy when it's raining you don't want your hands to get cold especially when you're holding uh, hiking poles and socks then i've got four pairs of socks and the walkthrough socks as well right so if we go into the bottom of the bag which is like a separate compartment i've got my sleeping bag also rab really nice really good sleeping bag so we have a few other little things in here some very important little things so we have a toilet roll in a plastic bag you don't want to get caught short some aa batteries they are for the gps unit i think the gps unit lasts about 24 hours and takes two aa batteries so you need a fair amount of batteries but it's well worth it lighter need one of them for the stove lots of blister plasters always carry lots of blister plasters it's just a given that you're going to get blisters pretty much and i got some pretty bad ones on the kung Sladen. some more tissue a spork eating my food with spoon fork knife perfect and yeah that's it so that's basically everything that i'm taking on the west highland way Okay, so I'm going to go through my bag. I don't have any camera equipment like Theo does, so I make up for that by carrying the stove and the tent, which is only fair in terms of weight. I've got the same bag as Theo. It's a blue version. It's low alpine, Manaslu, same size, 55 to 65 litre bag. It's done amazingly considering that it was battered every single day along the Kung Sladen for 30 days. Um, on the front, I tend to keep things I'm going to need in a pinch, but don't necessarily want to wear at the time. And because we're going to be in Scotland, I'm going to anticipate rain. <laughs> so because of that, I've got my waterproof trousers. They are quite old and knackered. They're not the best, but they do for now. I forgot to get some new ones in advance. <laughs> Second is my waterproof jacket. It's a lovely mountain warehouse one. It was given to me for the Kung Sladen and it's fantastic. It keeps all the water at bay, shelters your face. It's got vents under the armpits so you can let all of the air out because no one likes being hot and sweaty when it's raining, that's gross. Flip-flops, bargain 90p. Like Theo said, there's nothing worse than getting up to camp at the end of the day and having to put your boots back on after you've had them on for like 12 hours. Flip-flops feel like heaven, even if they're only 90p. Gloves. I mean, we're going to be hiking in May, so I'm going to hope it's going to be kind of warm, but I'm also going to hope it's kind of cold so the midges aren't there. <laughs> so gloves are there just in case. And this is like super stretchy. It can fit tons of stuff in there. Poles are the same as Theo's. They are black diamond retractable ones. They're ace. They won't be on the bag on the day that we're hiking. I'll be using them, but for now, they're just there for display purposes. Same as the little mug, easy access. And whilst we're hiking, I always keep snacks in the side so I can eat as I go because sometimes you just don't want to stop. Typical me, I have loads of bits and bobs in the top. These won't be exactly there, but they're just there now. This is a power bank that has quite a few charges on it. We're not really going to be using our phones, but it's always good to have a phone just in case. We're not really going to have signal, but you just never know. And if we ever go, I don't know, if there's a pub or somewhere with a plug, we can charge our phones if we want. This is just some deodorant, because let's pretend we're not going to smell. <laughs> a hat for the night time, when you're sitting around and it gets cold. When you're hiking during the day, I'm usually just wearing a t-shirt and trousers, even if it's quite cool. But the moment you stop and you pitch up, you start to cool down, so you're going to want to wear a hat, you're going to want to wear a nice down jacket, you're going to put all your layers on, so a hat's fantastic for that. And I really feel the cold, so I probably sleep in it too. 
little first aid kit. Ibuprofen is a godsend when you're hiking because your muscles are going to ache after the first couple of days. So usually just keep paracetamol, ibuprofen, plasters, wipes, things like that in here. And actually I should probably put this, this in there as well. This is like a fantastic wilderness citronella wash. You can wash your body in it, your clothes in it, you can wash your food stuff up in it. It's amazing and you only have to use a tiny amount. This is a small bottle and I've had it for a while now and it's only half empty. And it's good for the environment, so it's okay to use outside. This is hopefully not gonna have to be used. It's a head net. <laughs> I really don't want this to be midges, but who knows what's gonna happen. Should I put it on for you? Hopefully, you won't have to see me wearing this monstrosity whilst I'm hiking because it actually does make you really warm. And if I'm wearing this, it means there's midges or mosquitoes. So I'm bringing it just in case, but I'm hoping I won't have to use it. This is a myoprofen that needs to go in there. Now this is the pouch for our water pump that I recently bought. We didn't have one in Sweden because the water was super fantastically clear and non-polluted and I'm going to presume it's going to be like that in Scotland but I just thought better to be safe than sorry you fill this up with water put the pump on there and squeeze it through you can also attach it to any plastic bottle and drink straight out of it or you can attach a straw to it and drink straight out of the stream or you can also um, if you've got like a, a water bag that comes through the back you can attach it through that as well there's loads of different things you can do with it this was about 20 quid off Amazon it seems to work so far <laughs> And this is the straw you can attach to it. Head torch. This is a Petzl one. It's really great. It takes uh, AAA batteries, so I've got a few spares of them, but the batteries last forever in these. I've only ever had to change them once and I've had this for two years. Like Theo, I've got some plastic bags for tissues, toilet time, gross things like that that I don't want to go too in depth in because let's just pretend that humans don't have gross bodily functions that they have to take care of. I've accidentally bought the same spork as Theo, so we're complete twins. One of us will break ours and then we're going to have to fight for one that's not broken. That always happens. Compass, always need a compass. And I've also got a spare lighter, just because it was already in my bag. <laughs> Now to get to the nitty gritty. Have I got anything on the inside pouch? Yes, I've got a few more things. Wet wipes so we can have a daily wash down because you're going to get sweaty. And you get about 15 in one of these, so try and ration it to one each a day. We have the MSR Hubba Hubba tent. She is a super light tent, fits two people in it and your bags fit in the little side patches. We've also got the footprint as well after experience. Know that it's a useful thing to have. It's honestly an amazing tent. Our camping stove is the MSR wind burner one litre. Boils water super duper fast. We store the gas inside and this will be more than enough for five days. And the rest of the stove is in there, attaches to the bottom. This is a cup to eat out of. And then we can also use our cups on the side of our bags to eat out of and stuff as well. We want to use this as little as possible so we can get the most out of our gas. Food wise, I've got the same as Theo. This is the pretty much the exact same food we had on the Kung Saden, so we know what works for us. I'll give you a breakdown of why we have what we have. Speaking from experience, cereal bars are the best for breakfast. You don't have to cook, so it means you don't have to waste gas and then you've got nothing to wash up afterwards. So cereal bars are great. I've just got some from Aldi. All of my food is from Aldi. It costs pretty much nothing, less than a tenner. So I've got five cereal bars, five mug shots of different flavours for lunch. Mug shots, you just have to boil the water and then it cooks itself. You don't have to keep the gas going, so it's another good way to keep the gas going for longer. I also have noodles for my dinner. These are really high calorie. It's like 600 calories for one pack. So that's a fantastic way to get your calories up after the day. The same with the mug shots. You can just boil the water, turn the gas off and they'll be cooked in a few minutes time. So they're fantastic for not using too much gas. And then whilst we're hiking during the day, these are the snacks I have in the side of my bag. We've got a pretend Snickers and a wafer. 
Wafers are great because they weigh pretty much nothing. Snickers are great because they're nutty. So in terms of calories and energy performance, these are the great kind of things to have. Also, I have got some cup of soups just for some flavor. And then also granola bars too, so I can have two different cereal breakfast bars just to mix it up a little. There we go. So we're nearing the end. Clothes wise, I'm pretty much wearing half my clothes. I'll come, I'll uh, do this so you can see my trousers. <laughs> They're Montane. They're amazing. These trousers were one of the best buys I could ever get. I'll be wearing these every day on the trail. They dry really fast. They're really comfortable. You can open the sides up for ventilation so you don't get too hot. I oh, couldn't recommend them enough. And for a curvy woman, I know it's really hard to find trousers that aren't disgusting and actually fit properly. And these are the best. So I've got leggings as my thermal layers to wear at night and also wear around the camp. This is my thermal layer that I will wear at night and at the camp. It's a Crag Hoppers top that's currently inside out, <laughs> but it does the job. It's long sleeve. It's great. I've got a spare synthetic top. This wicks away sweat really fast. You don't want to be wearing cotton on your skin when you're hiking because it just retains the sweat, doesn't dry. This dries really fast, as does the one I've got on here. This is a Nike one. Fantastic. When we get to camp at night, I'll put this on, otherwise it'll be in my bag during the day. It packs up into its own pocket, so it takes up hardly any space and I can use it as a pillow. I'm taking three pairs of spot socks from experience. I took three on the Kung Slade and that was 30 days. Obviously, I washed them in between, but this is only five days, so I won't bother. I've got a mixed pair here because I lost one of the others. <laughs> a new pair of ones that I know are really great. What are they called? Bridgedale, they're super comfy. I've got these, which are a thicker one and another thinner pair that I've got on my feet right now. The hiking boots I'm using are the Berghaus Superlight GTX. They're really light. They look bulky, but they're waterproof. They're super comfy. They're amazing. I wore them on the Kungsleden. Sports bra, lady thing. <laughs> and then obviously underwear, one for each day on the trail. So in terms of clothing, I pack pretty lightweight. There's no point in bringing five different tops because when you're hiking, you're gonna smell regardless. So it's just one of those things you gotta deal with. I've also got the same towel as Theo. It's unbelievable how big these are. They're the same size as a normal towel, but they pack down to literally nothing. I also have the same sleeping mat as Theo. When I did the Kung Slade, I had a standard self-inflating one that literally took up half my bag. This one is like the size of a bottle of water, weighs pretty much nothing. It's inflatable, it's so comfy, highly recommend. Let's see if I can get this out. I also have the female version of Theo's sleeping bag. It is a Rab Neutrino Endurance 600. Um, these are fantastic. They come with their own dry bags. Um, stuff sacks as well so you can really get them in there wedge them in if it rains and it gets wet they stay dry inside of these which is really important on the kung sled because it rained so much our bags got wet these stay dry couldn't think of a better sleeping bag and i think that's pretty much everything i've also got a spare knee thing because sometimes my knee goes funny and it weighs nothing so i may as well bring it and that's it it's kind of crazy that you can have so much stuff in a little bag but that's everything really so yeah hope you enjoyed it hope that you've found some interesting stuff in here we're going to have a link in for every single thing in the description below so you can check them out and get more details about them and thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy the videos of the west highland way that will be coming up after this Thanks for watching, subscribe now and if you like the video give us a thumbs up.